For me, making this film was different than any project I've taken on before. As a storyteller, I have to be willing to tell my story if I expect others to open up to me. Albert Johnson was killed by police in 1979. They went into his house in 1979 and killed him. I happened to be mayor at the time. I spoke out and I said, this has got to change. We can't continue to have this kind of policy. We have to have big, serious change. Right? That, that's 42 years ago. <laughs> we still haven't got it. I was asked to do this review. The reason being, uh, I think, it, would, it came out of the Sami Yatim uh, tragedy. And there's no doubt of that. Uh, that was the... Uh, the major reason I, there was pressure uh, on, uh, on all sorts of uh, people, uh, particularly the police. A young black woman fell to her death from her High Park apartment yesterday. The province's police watchdog is now investigating as the family demands answers about how a call for help ended with such a horrific ending. When he was taken away from, from this community, from me knowing him as a person, it, des it devastated the community. It devastated the community so much that it brought it brought everyone to our understanding that this is the reality of where we live in in Canada. Foods has operated for 32 years. We we've never had a serious injury on our team. Not just in the year where we handled 24,000 calls. In the last 32 years. No one has ever been seriously harmed. And keep in mind, like those 24,000 calls were 18% of public safety calls that came through our dispatch system in Eugene in 2019, where there was no serious injury to a cahoots worker. And that is because we show up unarmed. Oh man, uh, so growing up, you know, we never wanted to get help for our, what we were experiencing myself personally others in my family with respect to mental health because we knew that you know the only option was to call 911 and then police officers show up right and one police officers often don't really have the tools to be able to de-escalate and support people when they're in high distress and they don't necessarily know what to do either and it's not always because they're bad people it's just that's not what they're trained for and that's not you know what their jobs are you know supposed to be I also think, you know, about the future. I really imagine, you know, my sister is seven years old I, right now. I imagine that, you know, 10 years from now or 20 years from now, when she is my age, wow, when she's my age, um, that there will be a different system that exists and it'll just be like for her and for her generation, just very normal that when you call 911 and someone is in crisis, that it would be mental health workers who respond. Of course, you call 911 and a firefighter will come and put out the fire. And I really hope that, you know, 20 years from now, or when my sister is my age, that there will be a similar service that exists for mental health workers. And to her, it'll just be completely normal that if someone is in crisis and needs help, then of course, mental health workers will come in the same way a firefighter would.